Cardio is the most underrated thing you can do to maintain or get a lean physique. Coach Reg, in today's video, I'm responding to Dr. Mike Isratel's video on the five rules of fat loss cardio. Now, many people are under the impression that cardio is not the golden standard for helping you to lose weight. People think, no, it's lifting weights, that cardio hardly makes any difference. Why? Well, your body just causes you to eat up all those extra calories. And you can't out-exercise a bad diet. But in reality, in the real world, people who do cardio are significantly leaner than those who don't. And if you ask me what's better for fat loss, lifting weights or doing cardio, it's cardio every single day of the week. And so there is no comparison. And so if you're not doing cardio, you're thinking, oh, I just lift weights. I don't need to do cardio. I can get lean. I'm going to build muscle, build up my metabolism. Sorry, you're missing out. And so in contrast to what Sean Nalajewicz says, which is that cardio is overrated for fat loss, it's in fact the exact opposite. Cardio is the most underrated thing you can do to maintain or get a lean physique. Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. I'm coming at you super hard. He's coming at you harder than last time. And if you can't get hard, well, there's literally pills called harder than last time. You know, for the downstairs. Click the link in the description, Cold Greg, 10% off. Back to the video. You want ways of doing cardio methods that burn plenty of calories, but don't beat you up a ton and make you super tired, make your muscles sore and fatigued. Exactly. You want to choose a form of cardio that burns up a lot of calories, but doesn't place excessive wear and tear on your joints. And so, for example, be better to do bike riding, the elliptical, walking on an incline on the treadmill, in comparison to doing something like skipping or running. And why is that? Well, when you do excessive eccentric overload, it causes the body to have much more muscle damage. That can cause you to get sore, have delayed onset muscle soreness and make it much more difficult to build and retain muscle. And so when choosing your best form of cardio, pick one that burns up a lot of calories, but doesn't cause you to be sore. Fat loss cardio means you do it regularly for gee, eight to 12 weeks on end. Now for fat loss cardio, Dr. Mike says you should do it for approximately eight to 12 weeks. I have to disagree. I think you should do it for much longer. Most people who want to lose weight, especially if they do so at an appropriate pace, they're going to take a lot longer than eight to 12 weeks to get down to their lean physique. And rather than thinking of doing cardio as something you do for a little bit of time in order to get down and lose weight, think of cardio as something you do year round, something that allows you to maintain that lean physique. And so rather than bulking up for a while and then doing cardio for 8 to 12 weeks, bulking up and going back and forth. Just do cardio year round. It's called main gaining and you may in fact disagree with that, but it's only because you don't know any better. You don't understand it. What main gaining means is you maintain a lean physique, perhaps 15% body fat, one of which is comfortable and healthy for you, and you slowly build muscle from there. And so to do that, to make it easy, to make it optimal, you should be doing cardio year round. Number two rule is to take all of those cardio modalities, the ways of doing cardios, and do the ones most often that you enjoy the most. And his next tip, number two, it's to choose the form of cardio that you like. And to me, that goes without saying. I love bike riding and I don't love running. And so if I choose bike riding as my form of cardio and I love it, I'm much more likely to do it. But if you hate bike riding and you love the elliptical, then you probably shouldn't be on a bike. If you hate what you're doing, how long are you going to do it? And so please choose the form of cardio that you love and you're much more likely to keep doing it. And so Dr. Mike says, choosing a form of cardio that you hate, it's essentially planning to fail you're not going to keep doing it. And that can apply to your cardio, but it also applies to your diet. If you hate eating chicken, broccoli, and rice, how long are you going to stick to that diet? And so in comparison, if you get my freaking cookbook and you eat all your favorite recipes, but made lower in calories, higher in protein and fiber, and the meals are large in portion so that you're not hungry, imagine how much easier it is to stick to your diet. You have to understand the limits of cardio. 45 minutes to an hour of cardio, six days a week, is the most a living human being can do without starting to really cause a lot of muscle loss. I'm going to have to disagree with Dr. Mike here. Now, unless he's talking about a competitive bodybuilder who suddenly adds in a bunch of cardio and doesn't progressive overload to that, then yeah, I get it. You're probably going to lose muscle. But trust me, there are a ton of IFBB pro bodybuilders doing more than an hour of cardio every single day as they prep for, example, a Mr. Olympia competition. And so if the best bodybuilders in the world can do more than an hour of cardio every single day, 
then I certainly think that the average person who doesn't have a ton of muscle isn't worried about every single ounce of muscle that they can build, that they can get by with doing more than an hour of cardio each day. Myself, I often do more than an hour of cardio in a single session. And I'm not only doing zone two cardio, this is very hard cardio, oftentimes zone three, four, and even five. And so if I at 47 years of age can lift weights and do this much cardio and still retain a decent amount of muscle, I certainly think the average person, if they want, can do more than an hour of cardio. Many of my bike rider friends are doing two to four hour sessions multiple times a week. And granted, they don't have a lot of muscle, but what they do have is they have lean physiques. People who take up bike riding, doing a lot of cardio, they're burning off so many calories, it's essentially easy for them to lose weight. But you have to understand that you have to progressive overload your cardio. If you're not doing any cardio whatsoever and you suddenly start doing one hour a day, of course you're going to lose muscle. Your body's not used to it. When I first started riding the bike again after over a 20 year layoff, I started with 15 minutes of cardio. My legs were sore, fatigued, tired, and so I didn't do more. I kept my pace slower because I didn't want to overtrain. I continued to lift weights. And slowly over the months, I gradually increased that cardio to about 45 minutes. Now, several years later, I could easily go for a ride up to two hours without experiencing extreme muscle soreness. Cardio just gets you burning a little bit more calories than you on average would. And then the diet reduction in food creates most of that deficit. And I really don't agree with what he's saying here. He's saying that when you go on a fat loss diet, that you should just add in a little little bit of cardio, burn off a little bit more calories, but that the majority of the calorie deficit have come from a decrease in the calories in your diet. I disagree. If you primarily choose to reduce the calories in your diet, what's going to happen is your need, your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, it's going to go down. Not only that, you're going to be far, far hungrier. In comparison, if you do a lot more cardio, you're going to burn off more calories. You don't have to eat less in the slightest. And so which diet do you think is easier to follow? The diet where you have to reduce the calories you're eating, but you have to starve yourself, or the diet where you get to continue to eat what you're eating right now? And yes, I get it. It's true. If you do cardio, your need is going to go down, but not by as much as you think. He states a 90% reduction in the calories burnt through need. But in reality, this is what happens. Let's say you're completely out of shape. You're 25% body fat. You do absolutely no cardio. You suddenly add in cardio. You perform the cardio and you're tired. You're sore. You're not used to it. And so after doing the cardio, you sit on the couch. And so therefore your calories burnt through neat drops dramatically about two thirds of those calories. And so following that cardio session, you're tired, you're fatigued. You basically lay on the couch, watch coach Greg and chill the rest of the day. And so your need is going to burn far fewer calories, perhaps two thirds less. You burn off 600 and your need goes down by 400. But once you continue to do that, you get in better shape. You burn off the 600 calories, you're not as sore as you were. And so your calorie reduction following this, it's only going to be down by about 300. But if you're in extremely good shape, you're an athlete, you're racing bikes like Coach Greg, you burn those 600 calories, it only goes down by a third, 200 calories. And so the net deficit, you're still 400 calories in the hole. That is a lot. And if you're noticing that you're really sore, you're struggling to get through your cardio, you're not recovering between sets, and you want to make a significant improvement in your fat burning ability to become a better butter burner, why not try my supplement G? O2 Max. The main ingredient, NMN, it is so effective, it's literally been banned by the FDA in the United States. Cannot get on Amazon since March 13th. They want to label NMN as a drug. In double-blind, placebo-controlled human studies, that's right, it's not the placebo effect, and it's in humans, not in mice, there was a 50% improvement in the walking test score. I mean, they walked 50% further. They just took NMN. They were not told to do anything else. They never said you have to exercise. Never said you had to run. They took the pills and there was a 50% improvement. And that's in comparison to the placebo where they didn't take NMN. And so just imagine you take GO2 max. You can walk that much further. You burn that many more calories. You burn that much more fat. It makes it that much easier. You're recovering more between sets. You have more energy. You feel better. And so that's why, to me, GO2 Max, my number one supplement by far. That's in comparison to creatine. I don't care if it has a thousand studies saying how effective it is. This one, even more effective than creatine. And so if I had a choice between creatine or GO2 Max, by far GO2 Max. And what does it do? It increases NAD plus levels, which have been shown to decrease as you get older. And what are the negative side effects? None. There's no negative side effects. 
Positives? Well, helps you sleep better, increase your mood, make you have more energy, decrease blood pressure, decrease cholesterol. And so how are you not taking this? Head over to the website. Click the link in the description, code GREG, 10% off. And I have huge bundles you can stock up, buy as many as you can. This is the supplement you want if you want to improve your cardio, get in better shape, be more fit than last time. This, this is a supplement for you. What you don't want to do is eat the same amount of food as normal and really crank that cardio like crazy. The fatigue is just overwhelming. It's not sustainable. And so what Dr. Mike is saying is that if you rely on your cardio to burn off those calories, that your fatigue is going to go through the roof. That's why you progressive overload. That's why you do year-round cardio. And so all these people saying, oh, you get used to cardio. You become more efficient. Yeah, of course you do. That is the benefit. I'm so much more efficient with my cardio. I'm so much healthier. I can ride for an hour and burn a thousand calories any single day. Even on an easy day, 800 calories. You go try it. And so for me, I burn a thousand calories in an hour because I'm more efficient. I'm better at it. And so I do that ride. I go upstairs. I record videos and I feel good. When I first started riding five years ago, I'd ride for 15 minutes and I was more tired than when I ride an hour now. And so why are you doing year round cardio? And so Mike is right. If you suddenly do a bunch of cardio, you can't recover. It's going to make it harder to build muscle. But if you always do cardio, you get used to it. It's a regular staple in your routine. You get used to it. You get better and it becomes easy. It's easy for me to do cardio. And so it's an unfair advantage. I cheated. That's right. I did year-round cardio. And so now I'm better butter burner. I burn double the calories that you can in the same length of time. And so why do you think I'm single-digit body fat? Remember, I used to abuse PDs. Was taking massive doses, thousands of milligrams. But yet I had way more body fat. Despite the fact I had over 20 pounds more muscle and was a competitive bodybuilder, taking and abusing PDs, I had higher body fat than now. What do you you think the difference is cardio and remember i'm not even that hungry because i'm burning off so many calories i can eat more i'm eating 3500 calories a day on average i eat what i want when i want and of course i eat from my cookbook but i've always had and i do go out to eat two or three times a week i might be eating burgers ice cream and so on so it's not like i'm eating just perfect healthy foods all the time of course i have a great diet but i always did and so the main difference it's cardio it's cardio by a mile and so if you compare lifting weights to doing cardio and its ability to help you to stay lean cardio wins by a mile so make sure you don't do too much cardio 45 minutes an hour days but then the deficit should come from you cranking your fats and carbs down a little bit that's the best approach for long-term fat loss nope and so the best approach for long-term fat loss is not lowering your fat and carbs it's in fact doing cardio if you just lower your fat and carbs it's gonna work but guess what? You're going to lose weight and it's going to have increased hunger signaling. Ghrelin's going to rise. You're going to feel starving eventually. You're going to start to feel more and more hungry. Eventually, you're going to lose your willpower to stay on that diet. You're going to cave and you're going to yo-yo diet. And so just look at the world. Look at this. It's not like this is new. Look at anyone in the world. Notice how many times, count them, how many times have people tried to lose weight? Essentially, every single year, people make New Year's resolutions. Oh, I'm going to lose weight this year. This is going to be the year that it sticks. 95% of diets fail. And so if the best approach is lowering your fats and carbs, 95% of you, you're going to fail. That means 5% or 1 in 20, it's going to be successful. In comparison, if all those individuals on those diets, rather than saying I'm going to reduce fat and reduce carbs, what I'm going to do this year instead, I'm going to do cardio way more gonna lose the weight keep it off for the rest of the life and not only that they're gonna be healthier improved heart health and your life expectancy it's going to go up not just the quantity of life but the quality of life as well just imagine having double the fitness that you have right now being twice as good at doing cardio do you know how much easier navigating this world becomes oh you want to go for a hike for two hours uh, i'm gonna pass a little tired oh let's go have some fun let's go golf let's go hike let's go bike ride let's go explore the world you're out of shape, you don't exercise, you're probably gonna pass, it's too much. But if you do cardio, you're gonna help you lose weight, get more fit, you're gonna have much more enjoyment in this world. If you do too much cardio, it reduces your non-exercise expenditure. Your body's like, holy crap, I'm burning way too many calories, I'm not eating enough, let's slow everything down. And so what Mike is describing here is once you get below your genetic set point. This happens every time I diet to try to get completely shredded, perhaps 5% for bodybuilding contests. Getting up to walk to the bathroom, getting out of the bathtub, getting dressed, turning your head to shoulder check when driving the car, it becomes a chore, but that's only because I'm below my genetic set point. 
If you progressive overload your cardio and you get used to it and you do it year round, you're not going to experience any of this. I promise you, I go for a bike ride. I'm racing for an hour. I get off the bike. I come in here. I make a video. I walk around. I have plenty of energy. I feel good. The next day, I want to do it again. But when I wasn't in shape and I wasn't doing cardio, wasn't the case. I sat around exactly as Mike's describing. No energy, getting up, I'm dead. Felt like I got ran over by a truck. And so please, do your cardio. Get used to it. Make it a staple in your life. It's because your body's kind of secretly whispering in your ear like, hey, stay still. You're starving to death and way moving too much. And so, yeah, of course, if you're starving to death, if you're at single digit body fat, you're trying to maintain a physique that your body wasn't meant to have, then of course you're going to feel that. But you shouldn't feel this way because you're trying to main gain at a healthy body fat percentage for you. Now, perhaps if you've seen a hundred of my videos explaining this, you get it. The first time, maybe you don't. But as you can see, you watch this video, what body fat percentage should you maintain? Perhaps 15%. Is it five? Is it eight? No. It's a healthy percentage that you can maintain for the rest of your life. If you're finding you're starving all the time, you have no energy, you feel like you've been run over by a truck, eat more. Forget being that lean. Or at least reduce your cardio, reduce your overall training volume, take a deload week, and rest and recuperate. Rome wasn't built in a day, and you're not going to get your dream physique in a matter of a couple weeks. And rule number five, get a step tracker. Well, that's going to work if you're like walking. If walking is your form of cardio, then that's fine. But in reality, your reduction in need, it's not just from reducing your step intake. It's from dancing around less, from fidgeting less, from not shaking your knees as much. When I overeat calories, my legs shake continuously. Allie drives her nuts. Why do you keep shaking your leg? We're watching a movie. My legs are jumping up and down. Probably because I ate too many calories for supper. My legs keep shaking. And that's on the same day that I'm doing cardio. And so if I wore a stepper, is it going to count how many times my legs shook? Now remember, I know not all of you can afford to get my cookbook or the Geo2 Max or the clothing line or all the things that I'm selling. But what I do have is something, it's 100% free. It's a free diet and training program, over 50 pages, quality information. Remember, it is free. You click the link in the description, go to the website, enter your first and last name and email address. And voila, it's at your computer desk. You read it, you get started. I want everyone, regardless if you're rich or poor, to have access of free quality of information to help you to get to your weight loss goals. And so to summarize the video, cardio, it's underrated. Please add in more cardio to lose fat and keep it off, ending it here. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment for the algorithm. Please comment right now. Like the video if you liked it. Watch the bloops, cookbooks, training books, coaching plans by me and my team, the circle diet book, my life's work, how to lose weight, keep it off. Of course, the clothing line, harder than last time supplements. You see many of them here. Head over to the website. Follow me on Instagram, Greg Doucette, IB Pro, and until next time, I am out.